Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be going over the moment of a force. We're going to learn about cross product, um, we're going to learn how to do this with a scalar formulation and the vector formulation. And we're just going to learn in general about what moments are. Get my pin up, there we go, and let's begin. So at the end of this you'll be able to understand and define what a moment is. What is this moment thing? And determine moments of a force in 2D and 3D cases. So first off, why do you care? Well, for one thing, you realize that there's a force applied on this beam right here. We see the little force vector, and you know there's gonna be some forces at both ends. However, in real life, things bend. Things bend, and there is some sort of twisting motion as well as the force at both ends. That twisting motion quite often can break things much more, e much more simply um, than the force can. So this, cement blocks right here may be able to support the force, but can they resist that twisting motion? Because if this bends too much, it will fall through the center. Another thing is right here. You probably have used a hammer in your life if you pull out a nail. And when you do, you typically grab the end of the hammer. Why don't you grab right here? You know, say, well, that's just not how you do it. There's, you need a longer lever arm. My question for you is why? Why do you need a longer lever arm? So how can you tell, you know, how changing the position along the handle affects the force that the nail is feeling to pull it out? How do we calculate that? Well, spoiler, it's with moments. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the moment of force using the scalar formulation. Now, a moment is the tendency for rotation. How how much does this thing want to rotate? If you're applying a moment, then it's going to have to resist that moment to keep from rotating. Now, moment is a vector, and just like forces and just like a lot of things we do in this class. However, when you see this little line right here, like, well, this is a curvy vector. This is not the vector. The vector is a straight line that this curves around, okay? So whenever you see the little curvy lines, that is curving around the moment vector, which doesn't really matter too much in this class, but in some classes you'll actually care about that. Okay, so how do you get it? Well, in a very simple case, the moment is simply equal to force times distance. And the distance is perpendicular to the force. Notice that right angle. So force times distance will give you the magnitude of the moment. The sense of the rotation, is based on the force. Take the distance to the force, do it in that order, and you can see which way it's going to rotate. One thing I like to do is this is your position, distance, this is the force right here, force, distance, is I just trace, kind of go along the distance, then turn towards the force, and you see that I have turned counterclockwise. So in this case, counterclockwise was um, the direction I'm turning. As another note, counterclockwise is typically what's considered positive when we're dealing with moments. Now, a very important thing is that D is the perpendicular distance from whatever point you care about to the line of action of the force. Now, what is the line of action? That is the line that the force vector is pointing along. This line extends infinitely in both directions and the force vector happens to lie somewhere on this line. Now, you might think, well, that's not really you know, important, but it is. Because in this case right here, my position vector looks some, oh my goodness, my position vector looks something like this. That position vector right there is not perpendicular to the force vector. So we do not use this distance. That is wrong, okay? That would not be the distance. Instead, I need to use the distance that goes to this line of action of that force vector, okay? I need the perpendicular distance to that line of action. Now, that might freak you out a little bit. You're like, oh my goodness, there's a whole lot of trig here. Ooh, don't wanna do this. Just sounds like no fun. However, there's actually not too bad because if you can't remember how to do it on your own, you just break it up into components. The x distance times the force in the y direction. The y distance times the force in the x direction. It's actually this is the determinant of a 2D matrix. And if you can do this, you can solve. So 
So this one right here, this is amazing. This comes from the uh, determinant of a 2D matrix. Um, I'll show that to you right here. I, J, let's make sure we do it right. Yes, there you go. And then I would have A, B, and F, Y, F, X. And we always multiply this by this and then subtract this times this. That's the determinant and that gives me our moment. Now, just like I said earlier, counterclockwise is considered positive and to make sure that you have that, position always goes on top. We'll learn more about that though when we get to the vector formulation. For now though, just remember, moment of a force, break up each of them into components Um, and then multiply the opposite components together. So the y of the force times the x distance, the x force times the y distance, and then subtract them, okay? And this will give you whatever the moment is in the counterclockwise direction. So if it's negative in the end, that means it's actually turning clockwise. Okay, so I hope this helps you. Hope you kind of got a little bit from this. And if you didn't, don't worry, we're going to do plenty of examples to walk you through it. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.